In the world of computer security and hacking, there are many controversial figures. Hector Monsegur is among the most controversial. As a member of Anonymous and Lulzsack, he participated in some of the world's most infamous hacks. However, when he was identified by the FBI, they threatened to send his adopted daughters to Child Protective Services. He turned informant and ultimately helped to prevent some 300 hacks against American targets. However, he still participated in some hacks against international ones. His actions on both sides of the law have earned him plenty of enemies, but also given him quite a story to tell. He's remained silent since his sentencing in May of this year, but came out to speak with Charlie Rose in an interview. Now we're going to take the opportunity to speak with him in a little bit more detail about some of those hacking exploits. Hector, thank you for joining me this morning. Oh, thank you. Can you uh, tell me a little bit how you got started? What was, your, what was your first computer? What kind of system was it? Well, the first computer I ever touched was like an old Apple. Um, <clears throat> I forgot exactly what version. It was mm -hmm. a little square box. We're talking about like early 90s. Mm -hmm. Like a Mac Classic, maybe? Yeah, like some, something like that. And, um, you know, I would have just sit on it and play games and all, and all of that. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I didn't have access to the internet yet. Mm -hmm. Um, but it was like my foray into computers and, you know, going to school and playing, um, you know, Carmen San Diego or whatever, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> eventually, in the mid-90s, um, I had a whole different lifestyle, right? I was in the streets, family, we, all, we had a whole different situation going on. And it was a point where my family, specifically my aunt, could afford to buy me, like, a really nice computer at the time. It was... Uh, it was about 95, so mm -hmm. it, was a, it was a machine with Windows 95 on it, um, a Sony Vial mm -hmm. with like 133 megahertz, 16 megabytes of RAM, mm -hmm. and like, you know, a wind modem, which mm -hmm. was horrible. Mm -hmm. I find out later because I couldn't use Linux for some things. So <clears throat> basically after that, um, that's where I really started to get into uh, um, getting online mm -hmm. and finding like e-zines and all that by accident. I actually started by getting like online on AOL. Um, like AOL came pre-installed with all those computers that came out at the time. Every so, computer back then. Yeah, every computer had mm -hmm. like AOL pre-installed. So uh, it was like AOL 2.5, which some people might argue is one of the best versions of AOL ever. <laughs> um, so, you know, I get online and I'm just whatever. My family all went to prison and I was like isolated by myself and like I felt alone, you know, everybody, mm -hmm. I had no access to no, nobody in my family. Um, <clears throat> we were able to, you know, afford some internet for a while. Um, in that time frame that I was online, I was able mm -hmm. to learn a couple of things, you know. Um, there was like these wearers channels, these rooms where you could just go and download stuff and, you know, I went on a downloading spree, right, because, you know, I'm a noob, I'm like, wow, this is so cool, I could download all this stuff, mm -hmm. I, I, I didn't even know what most of this, most of this stuff is. Then, like, I download a, a copy of, uh, you know, the Anarchist Cookbook, right? Mm -hmm. And inside there were some zines, um, some freaking and Unix articles alongside the original Anarchist Cookbook. And one of the articles that was, was inside the file, the zip file, was, um, excuse me, um, they had a copy of the Hacker's Manifesto by The Mentor. And you could say that's what really changed my life. You know, I've read this man's words, you know, and on top of, the, on top of it, it says, like, the Hacker's Manifesto, the Conscious of a Hacker, um, 1988, like, you know, two days before I got arrested, you know, like, it was or two days after I got arrested. Mm -hmm. And then he goes into the story, right, of what a hacker is. And this is my world. Um, and to my world, the beauty of the bald, you know, and it was really cool. I, I, what aspects of that really attracted you at that time? Well, I mean, look, so I'm in New York City. I'm in the Lower East Side. I'm, we're talking about, like, I had to live in, New, in the Lower East Side, New York City, in the 80s, early to mid-90s. I dealt with a lot of racism from cops, right? Not from people, mm -hmm. but from cops. So what I really liked about this manifesto was that he um, said, well, you know, I don't judge you by what you, you know, like what you say, what you look like. Right? I, I don't judge you by what you look like. Um, and that right there won me over. I'm like, all right, so I'm pretty sure this guy's like a white dude in Texas or something. And, mm -hmm. you know, he's basically saying, you know, if you're a hacker, it doesn't matter if you're, you know, you're black, you're, you know, Puerto Rican or whatever it is that you are. Um, you know, we're all alike. Um, and there was one line that I loved in that. And it always, it always, like, stood to me. And that was, um, yes, I'm a criminal. My crime is that of curiosity. Um, that was awesome. And then, you know, he ended it with, um, 
my crime is that of outsmarting you, something you will never forgive me for. Mm -hmm. And boom, that's it. So now I'm here I am, I'm 12 years old, and I'm like, wow, what did I just read? <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, I saved it on my little desktop and I went back to the AOL. And then there was a, there was a time where um, <clears throat> I started hanging around in certain private rooms. Um, one of the rooms was like PR Leet. I'm mm -hmm. talking about PR Leet back in the 90s, mid 90s. And there was a guy in there that was like, you know, for all you noobs and want to learn how to hack, here's going to this other private room. And then he asked one question that's still relevant to this day. How do you bypass a firewall? And that's, that got me thinking. So mm -hmm. now here I am, I'm totally new. I'm 12, almost 13. And I'm like, how do I bypass a firewall? And as I learned later on in life, one of the best techniques of bypassing a firewall is a reverse shell. Um, why try to infiltrate the, the system directly? And this mm -hmm. is relevant. This is why I'm telling you this little story. Mm -hmm. Why are you going to try to attack a system directly when you have the system call you? You understand? Mm -hmm. Kind of similar to war games, you know, when Joshua calls this guy back, you know. Mm -hmm. so. And so what was your first hack then, based on that? My first hack mm -hmm. was a, um, kind of ironic, uh, a German where is site. I don't know why. <laughs> it's like a German wear site. Um, I just got access to the FTP and I just did something stupid. Like, hey, I did like the whole, you know, you gotta remember at that time, we're talking about the mid 90s, we're talking about like hacking for girlies was out when they hacked New York Times. Mm -hmm. And so when you go to NewYorkTimes.com, you see like, you know, this entire message, but written in leet speak, right? Mm -hmm. So it was pretty awesome. So obviously, I did the same thing. I did a lead speak defacement, and you know, the, the Germans like fixed it and pretty quickly.